from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass on this Holy Thursday, the beginning of our Easter Triduum. I am Father Tomasz Skibinski. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the Archdiocese of Toronto. The Mass of the Lord's Supper is usually celebrated on Holy Thursday evening. Due to the limitations of TV and time available, we have made a few modifications to this Mass. As you may know, the Catholic Church will not celebrate Mass after Holy Thursday until the Easter Vigil. We invite you to join us tomorrow on Good Friday for His Grace Bishop Gerard Berge's reflections on the Passion of our Lord according to John, and on Holy Saturday, Father Peter Turone will lead us in the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. These reflections will be available on our website and YouTube channel and they will be broadcast across Canada in place of the daily TV Mass. We also invite you and your family to join us for the Easter Sunday TV Mass, which will be celebrated by His Eminence, Thomas Cardinal Collins. On our behalf and on behalf of the daily TV Mass, we wish you a very blessed Easter Triduum. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we begin this uh, sacred celebration, first of all, let us call to mind our failures and sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. 
The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this, is the, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe and returned to the table, Jesus said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for this is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you, do also, that you also should do what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this Holy Thursday, we remember the institution of two sacraments, the most holy Eucharist and holy orders. From this Holy Thursday evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, we begin the sacred Paschal Triduum, the most holy three days of our faith. In the Missal, there is a comment that says that in the sacred Triduum, the Church solemnly celebrates the greatest mysteries of our redemption, keeping by means of special celebrations the memorial of her Lord, crucified, buried, and risen. Yes, brothers and sisters, we have arrived to the heart of the Christian faith, the most sacred of times, the spring from which so many graces flow for the church and for the world. Let us concentrate for a moment on this marvelous sacrament the Second Vatican Council in the document Lumen Gentium says that the Eucharist is the source and summit or the fount and apex of the whole Christian life. It is called Eucharist because it is an action of thanksgiving to God. The presence of Christ in the Eucharist is real and it is here in the Eucharist that Jesus awaits us, awaits us in the sacrament of love. John Paul II, in 1918, uh, in his letter, Dominica Cene, he said that just as the church makes the Eucharist, so the Eucharist builds up the church. And this truth is closely bound up with the mystery of Holy Thursday. The church was founded as the new community of the people of God in the apostolic community of those 12 who at the Last Supper became partakers of the body and blood of the Lord under the species of bread and wine. Christ said to them, take and eat, take and drink. And carrying out this command of his, they entered for the first time into sacramental communion with the Son of God, a communion that is a pledge of eternal life. From that moment until the end of time, the church is being built up through that same communion with the Son of God, a communion which is a pledge of the eternal Passover. There are some powerful signs that accompany us today. One of them, which we are not going to live, but of which we heard in the gospel, 
is the washing of the feet, the sign of humility. This is what Christ did to the disciples, what he's also doing in a way to us every time we celebrate the Eucharist. It is a sign of forgiveness and reconciliation. It is a moment in which we also need to think of whom we should wash the feet, of whom we should forgive. And then we know that this is a sacrament of, which is a source of charity. And so the Lord invites us to live it really in this way. Let us now stand. Let us offer our prayers and petitions on this very special day. We pray for all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and the Paschal Triduum and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for all our intentions, which we have brought to this celebration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we ask that you may receive those prayers and fulfill them according to your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today, as we have begun this sacred triduum, we are not going to receive the final blessing, but we'll take the blessed sacrament now to the chapel of repose. And then, as a, a powerful sign also, the altar is going to be stripped, just as Jesus is about to be stripped from his dignity, just as he has put aside his robe to serve us and to redeem us. Let us therefore accompany Christ and let us stay in an attitude of prayer and awaiting. Were you the 